Hey everyone, I want to fill you in on exactly what we're going to be doing over the next few weeks. One of our fellow members and friends, Bobby Bean, has suffered from PTSD since his time in the military. His PTSD, anxiety, and depression has taken control of his life. But the good news is that he's decided to take control back. He's going to be seeking treatment. However, while he's away, he wants to make sure his family is taken care of. So he set up a GoFundMe campaign to provide his family with support and a peace of mind for himself. For the next few weeks, we're going to be doing everything we can to get the word out about Bobby's campaign. Some of us will be streaming games on Facebook and Twitch, but what we really need is your help. Help us spread the word, carry the message, and donate. You can find the campaign at www.gofundme.com slash f slash ez4rd dash treatment dash help. This link will also be in the description in other places as well. We also have some incentives to donate. A $30 or more donation will get you a free Voxel Voice t-shirt. You can choose between one with just our logo on it, or we have a special edition PTSD awareness logo uh, that we'll also be uh, giving away. A $50 or more donation gets you both shirts. Any donation, no matter how small, gets you entered into a raffle for a chance to win a two terabyte external hard drive. You can use this for your games on console and uh, you know pretty much anything you want on PC. Be sure to mention Voxel Voice in your message when donating uh, so you get counted toward the raffles and uh, we can make sure we get the shirts out to you. So keep a lookout for our streams. It'll be a cool, safe place to hang out and chat. And please help us spread the word about Bobby's campaign. Share with family and friends and ask them to share it as well. Every little bit helps. Again, these, the link to the GoFundMe campaign will be in the podcast description, YouTube description, and anywhere else we share this. So let's help Bobby and his family uh, in their time of need. And uh, thanks for your time. On with the show. Hello everyone and welcome to Voxel Viewpoint. In this very special episode, Lee and Derek team up to talk about Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Ryan and Derek discuss how Dragon Quest Builders 2 took over their lives, and then we wrap it up with our replay of Batman Arkham Knight. It's July 26, 2019, I'm Ryan Shepard, and I just pressed LB to even the odds. Hello everyone and welcome to Voxel Viewpoint. Today uh, we've got Lee and Derek. How's everyone doing today? Pretty good. Pretty good. Cool. Uh, it's been a while since we've been on, but we've got a couple of games that uh, we've been playing and uh, we of course got the Batman Arkham Knight um, replay that we're going to be talking about a little bit later. But first, we're going to do a little bit of a grab bag. Uh, Derek, you've been collecting some D&D books. Can you tell um, talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I've been working on collecting all of 5th edition. Uh, my brother just recently got me um, like a collector's edition version of the Player's Guide, the Monster Manual, and the Dungeon Master's Guide, mm -hmm. which is like your essential startup kit for like creating a story and everything. But um, out of that sparked some interest with some of my coworkers. One of them that actually plays, and two, two or three other that are going to be new to the game that want to play. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of been brainstorming at work and coming up with story ideas. And um, so I'm going to be creating this like whole story and world for them, based out of one of the camp. Oh, excuse me, one of the campaigns, and then we're going to try to attempt to record it, so that we okay. can put it out somewhere for everybody to listen to. How well that will go, I'm not sure, because everybody's kind of like spread apart. Not everybody's got a computer, so it'll be something to look forward to. And I'll be posting up, uh, looking for ideas when we start doing stuff, when we do our test. Because for our test, we're going to run the Stranger Things campaign to kind of test out sounds, recording, and uh, getting everybody used to some of the mechanics before they dive into their actual characters. 
Okay, cool. So you're going to be doing this like over the internet? Yeah, we're going to try to record okay. Sunday nights from like 7 to 11 or so and see how that goes. Okay. And how does that work online? How do, do you, is it just you're you're talking and you're or, or is there like a interface um, you're interacting with? We're going to there is one called Roll20. Um I'm trying to learn how to use that so I can bring in like maps and stuff for them to show, but we're going to do a lot of like more role playing as to where it's more like theater of the mind, like what can you make work for it? Um but then we'll also be using uh, Dungeons & Dragon Beyond to track the characters and, like, the monsters they're fighting and stuff in inventory. So we'll have, like, a little bit of digital interactions and then hopefully soon be able to move it over to where I can have, like, a full display and video up as well. Okay, cool. Sounds neat. Yeah, hopefully it'll go well. Probably won't, and they're probably really going <laughs> to test my creativity because the shit they've already come up just with... Um, character flaws because i want each of their characters to have like a flaw mm -hmm. um and yeah they're it's stupid that's all i gotta say but it should make for a good time okay like silly stupid or like stupid like it's a bad system um, well it's it's gonna be like silly stupid because the one character her flaw is going to be sexual urges randomly so okay. i'm designing i'm designing a table and at like based on roles, something might happen and trigger her to have some sort of urge that we're gonna make a table for. Okay. Um, we've got another character that he cannot tell the truth. Um, and then we have two other characters that they want to opposite each other. One stronger during the day and one stronger at night. So okay. the one character like at night, he's gonna get a bonus to his rolls for attacking to where the other guy's gonna take a negative if they're at night versus where if they're in the sun, one's gonna take a bonus. And like, we're just throwing in a like little bit um, of different things I've listened to from different stories. Cause I'm kind of mm -hmm. like melding a game called Fate, which is more like role play oriented okay. with D&D &D, where D&D &D is like your hardcore mechanics, items, all that kind of stuff. So. It's going to be, like, more of, like, a loose, fun game than, like, a nitty-gritty down to, like, oh, my God, you didn't do this. It's going to be, like, if you can make it work and make it work for your character and fit the story, then we'll roll with it. Like, okay. Kind so, of, like, scenario-based and stuff, so. Those, uh, those things you were talking about sound a lot like those random traits on Void Bastards. Oh, yeah, you just yeah. nicked it. I was just gonna yeah. say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So something like that, because like in um the game Fate, what you do is you have like, you have like a major character thing to where like this one I'm listening to, the lady, she has a bag that, um, like an old grandma bag, one of those huge ones that's always got everything you need in it. Okay. So she always have like water or a snack or a band aid or something like that. And as long as it fits what they're doing, it can happen. Another guy's like a carpenter, and his thing is he has always got the right tool for the job. Okay. But then they also have, like, a negative trait, where another guy has, like, wrongfully put somebody in jail, and that haunts him, and stuff like that, so. Okay. Cool. Now, look forward to that, whatever the whatever you end up putting together in terms of, like, recording it and putting it out there. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to try, like, we're trying our hardest to get audio, mm -hmm. um, how good or how bad it'll be, we'll, we'll see, see after the test. Yeah. We know all about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, cool, looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, I uh, quickly dipped back into Satisfactory, which is the factory building game that Lee loves, um, and they had... <laughs> added some new stuff uh so it's, the game's in early access so they don't really have a published roadmap they just kind of uh i think they take suggestions mostly from the community on what they uh they want to f they want them to focus on um in the last update they added a monorail train system that you can build and uh, nuclear power. Now, I haven't gotten to the nuclear power yet, but um, that's like the highest tier stuff that's currently in the game. Um, 
but the monorail is pretty cool. It's like, well, it's a it's a monorail train, so uh, it goes pretty fast and can get you from place to place pretty quickly. But most of the most of the vehicles in the game are designed to transport resources from one place to another. So the farther you get along in the game, the more kind of spread out the resources get. So when you first start out, you're looking for like copper and iron, which there's tons of, and you can usually find a bunch of it in a cluster so you can start building your base. But when you start to get to more rare things like oil and coal, you have to travel pretty far. Um, and the vehicles let you kind of get the resources back to your main factory uh, without having to like build miles and miles of conveyor belts or something like that. Um, which doesn't mean you can't build miles and miles in conveyor belts, but uh, they, um, they're they just a, another way to get stuff moving. Um, and yeah, it's it's definitely a, a good addition in my opinion. Um, as far as like what the role of nuclear energy is going to be, usually there's kind of like a, you get the energy resource, but then there's also some other secondary um, things associated with it that you unlock, like some materials that you can build that uh, give you, um, that let you make more advanced parts and stuff like that. And I know I just started to get into computer parts, so I feel like there's going to be some like advanced tech going on with nuclear, um, nuclear power and stuff like that, but I don't know. It's, uh, it's, always interesting because um, the more the farther you go along the more complicated the recipes get for the things you need to create um, so you're I, I just unlocked a, a tier where I know for some recipes I have to combine four different materials um, before the most was two um, so this, this kind of like doubled it, which means you have to get all of these resources into this one building that, you know, then combines them and creates something new out of it. Uh, and so as you go along, you just start realizing that all of your pipelines that you thought were totally sufficient and giving you exactly how much you need start to not be quite as... Um, efficient as you thought they were so you're running out of even the most basic materials uh, pretty far into the uh, pretty far into the game so then you have to rework and rethink your entire uh, base basically to try and re um, rejuvenate the all the resources and get them flowing at to the point that you don't have to wait like you know sit there for literally days waiting for um waiting for your structures to build uh enough you know uh iron frames in order to unlock your next tier of building things so um yeah it's just been every time i go back to it it's it's it it keeps uh keeps pulling me back in for quite a while um and there's still the exploration, the open world and stuff that, you know, kind of like allows you to break it up in between there. So you can uh, spend a whole bunch of time constructing buildings and stuff and then go out into the open world and find some cool stuff. Uh, the exploration is fun and in uh, at the uh, rewarding, even though it could be a little bit better. There could be more stuff out there to, to find but um, right now it's it's still pretty pretty interesting to get out there and explore the world. Ooh. Nice. All right. So I think we're going to move on to our first uh, big game that we're talking about, which is Marvel um, Ultimate Alliance 3. Uh, now you guys have Ooh. been playing that on the Switch. Uh, this is, well, the third one in um, the Marvel Ultimate Alliance series. And I'm kind of familiar with it, but I'm going to let 
uh, you guys handle explaining exactly what what type of game this is and and what makes this one three instead of two point five or something like that. <laughs> oh, um, it's the, the kind of it is the it's been long wanted but not expected to arrive. This one is kind mm -hmm. of. Although it's the third one, it's kind of the fifth in the series of things that started with X Men Legends. Okay. There was two X Men Legends things way back uh, when X Men ruled the world instead of Batman games, and there mm -hmm. was just X Men games everywhere. And it's kind of it's mm -hmm. very much an isometric isometric dungeon crawler set in the the uh, Marvel universe, and kind of they expanded it and they brought in a lot of the character like wish list characters. We wish you could play these. And the first two were kind of um, well-liked, not particularly well-reviewed. I think they were kind of considered decent games, but kind of the fans really kind of glommed onto it. Mm -hmm. um, and they wanted, uh, they wanted a new one for years. It, an Activision series, uh, then Activision lost all the Marvel licenses, and it's been kind of, we thought we'd never see them again. And then Nintendo jumped on uh, to fund this new one. Um, it's as similar to the first two as it is different. Um, in a lot of ways, it's been very much simplified. I think the new one. Um, you've got a decent. If you, it's one of those things that you will enjoy it more if you're invested. I mean, I know you don't mind this sort of thing, but you're not really invested in all these characters, are you? Yourself, right? I, I don't. No, think no, as much no, out no. Of personally no like e even with the marvel movies I, I i watch them but i'm not like you know standing yeah. in line for you know the next marvel movie or anything like that it really is a series that would carry you on fan service i think you probably see the gaps a lot more than a lot of a lot of people that are going to buy this would you probably mm -hmm. see the kind of the the rough mm -hmm. angles um well, it, it's compared... kind of a game that that has like a huge roster of characters in it right yeah, there's. Like, uh, I think there's 30, 36 characters in this one. Yeah, so um, you know you don't usually get like usually when you get well like you said you you get you get the Batman game and you just got Batman stuff. You got Spider Man. Cool. You just got yeah. Spider Man. You don't really get too many yeah. games where they all come together. Um, so how how does no. how does that work then with like licensing and stuff? Uh, well, it's all under one bracket because it's not attached to the movie universes, where okay. everything's owned by different different companies and corporations. It was different when um, they used to license out to completely different companies. There's there's a character we'll get into this a little bit later, uh, the Punisher. You know, the Punisher, mm -hmm. um, and he wasn't in the mm -hmm. first two games because while whilst Activision had all those, um, a company called uh, THQ. Um, um, See, so, yeah, the original THQ had the okay. license to punish, so he could never be in that game. He kind of even okay. stuck to them. So uh, they he, they had the they had the his... game license for Punisher. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, now that's all kind of gone to the wayside. Nobody really does license games like that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, kind of, it's all fall, fall under one bracket, so it's easy to do. A notable kind of sticking point was the last Marvel vs. Capcom. Mm -hmm. You couldn't use the X-Men because of rights. But that's kind of all gone out the window now. Yeah, um, huh. They just give it all to one set of people. Um, uh, like I say, it's one of those things where fan service will carry you a lot further than somebody who just a, has a passing recognition with that. Um, mm -hmm. As a fan of the first two, um, I don't possibly think it's quite as good. It's not quite as polished. It's changed its aesthetic as well. It's kind of gone more for a the the, the, the first two, although they were um, isometric, kind of top downy sort of things. Um, mm -hmm. They had a quite realistic look. This has a very cartoony look. Okay. Yeah. This looks yeah. almost like um, what was we saying the other day, Derek? Um, it what was looking was more it? like oh Disney Infinity, like that's the one. After you had mentioned that, and I was like going through doing the stream of it, like it really kind of hit. I was like, "Wow, holy shit, yeah, this looks like it's like a less polished version of Disney Infinity," and mm -hmm. it does it does feel a lot more watered down than the first two. Um, one of the things I've also noticed too was 
as far as the whole fan service of the game, because that's a big part of this series, is mm -hmm. this one started out with now. It's more Avengers-focused right now, to where I think it was the second one was the one I remember more, was more X-Men-focused. Like, your story mm -hmm. was revolving around them more than it was the other side. Yeah. So kind of, like, flopped and kind of pulling from, like, what's big in that era type deal. Mm -hmm. If yeah. that makes sense with it. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um... Now, for something that is kind of um, very much Nintendo finance, it's basically Nintendo. It's solely Nintendo now. It's not going to be anywhere else. Yeah. It looks surprising. It looks surprisingly Russian cheap. Um, it's not very refined. Um, it's incredibly jaggy. Uh, it doesn't run very well. The camera is terrible. Um, it makes it very hard when kind of it. It kind of really fixes your perspective to what it wants you to see within there because it's kind of it's not as isometric as the original one it kind of it zooms in on the backs more uh, but it still has that sort of and the, the camera gets trapped when you really don't need it to when you're trying to focus on four of your own characters at once because you can swap between your own four characters at will mm -hmm. and kind of as opposed to being a co-op thing and zapping over the place and it's incredibly difficult to follow um, uh, I'm not I'm not that keen on it, to be honest with you. I, I like it enough. It's um, it feels very unrefined. Um, in not just the shortcuts that um, it takes. Uh, for instance, whatever character you chose to be within your team of four, your rusher of four, your main. Um, when when the, everybody stops punching each other, um, you go into kind of like a, an RPG type thing where you like, you talk to someone and you have dialogue options. Um. Mm -hmm. um, but they just strip that out so you're just talking generically um, generic no. lines to the person so you've got no connection to kind of the RPG elements of it oh, um, no yeah. multiple choice um, and it really falls apart when you realise you're talking like a hero but you're Venom or you're a bad guy Yeah, um, okay. it doesn't make it you're talking like you're an Avenger but you're actually a bad guy that's been recruited to fight an ultimate evil so it's kind of they've they really dropped balls on connectivity huh. to the yeah, story and stuff like, like that. Ex especially with a character's not being voiced. Like if you're playing a Star Lord, you're not talking as Star Lord to whoever you're interacting with, but that mm. person's talking as themselves. But you just have this generic like dialogue line that pops up. Like yeah. I didn't notice at first because I was trying to get mechanics down, and that's just oh, yeah. another ballpark right there with the game. And then yeah. it was like, hey, did you notice this? So I was doing a couple parts, and I was like, holy shit, I didn't even notice right away, but damn, this really takes away from it now. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Particularly so, when you move further on and you play a character like Deadpool who breaks a fourth wall, and that's his whole gag. And that's been his whole gag in different things. He's like talking about the game and this and the other. Now he just talks like, like a generic everyman. So it strips yeah. his character away, and it's very strange. There's lots of cut corners, a lot hmm. of cut corners. Okay. Um, um, yeah. So, when was the last one of these that came out? Um, I would say now. Hang on, I have to think about this because it was on PS2. It was oh, a wow. cross, cross oh, wow. platform thing, so it was quite a while ago. Okay. Um, oh, no. this um Ultimate Alliance Two was two thousand six. Yeah. Or no, which one? Yeah, it was a crossover yeah. on all the platforms. Um, okay. And it was obviously, so yep. you have to think that you're looking at a game that was built to be gone down to that generation. And I think Unwind oh, Lions 2 looks better than this. There's a sloppiness to this that doesn't kind of ring quite true. People are liking it, but I think they're liking it because they just wanted it back. Uh, I know that's a very speculative, but I'm seeing a lot of kind of disconnect of what I'm playing as to what people mm -hmm. are saying about it. Um, there's all sorts of disconnects. Um, but the problem with these sort of games as well is, and it really notices in this, you have different characters that kind of have different levels of power. Um, so you can have Hulk in your team, but um, mm -hmm. they've not balanced them quite right, because although he can punch the shit out of people and whatever, um, actually taking a hit, he will take a, a hit by some generic dude just as much as like Hawkeye can. Hawkeye and Hawkeye just a guy, just a normal mm -hmm. guy. But 
but you can take the same sent the same like set of damage as that guy can. It's kind of it's not balanced very well like that. You'd think yeah. he'd be a tougher character to kind of absorb those, but no, it doesn't feel like anybody's really very balanced. They just do different things. Yeah, and they all feel like very much the same power. Um, with that skill tree that they have in, like, it's Ooh. super generic. Like, all right, whoever you're using Ooh. gets twenty strength. They get more health, Ooh. and it's just this giant grid. So, as far as what you're saying, it's kind of like when you're playing as these characters, stat-wise, as far as health, how much damage you're doing is kind of like across the board, pretty much even between everybody. Just it depends what moves they have, what like special little abilities that we can trigger, and like how they attack. So it's a lot more like watered down from being like super diverse to where, okay, we're going to smash with Hulk, physical attacks is going to be great, but then we want to switch to somebody because now we're up against somebody with a shield. Oh no, this person has a shield. We've got to use a gun that they've actually put in there to take down the shield because you're not going to be able to like switch to somebody. Let's say you switch to Cyclops and you can shoot with your laser beams. You know, you shoot that, take down shield, switch back, smash them up with Hulk. Like that's a big part of like what made the older ones great from what i remember oh. but now in yeah. this it doesn't seem to be there like that like they actually added in elements to a boss battle so that you could take down this boss's shield and mm. then attack them and everybody's yeah. attack just felt like you know it was doing the same amount so it's kind of like who do you want to play who do you like playing there you go yeah hmm. um in the in the previous ones you would have this thing would they they strip this out as well? They replace it with something else. You would have this thing called fusion. So with whatever your blend of the four characters in your team are, you can team them up to do a super move. Um, so, for instance, if you had Iron Man and Captain America, um, Iron Man would fire fire a beam at the shield, and it would take everybody else. So, you, um, out with like like four or five different beams. And that would be different if you use somebody else with Captain America. They would use a different thing to have the same effect. And you, it kept it fresh. It kept kind of working together with your team fresh, even if you're playing single player, it would do it. This they've stripped it out. And this, you have to hit these buttons. And then yes. they all weigh in on something. And then you don't know what's happened. It's like, I, I think I did something. I think there was lots of colors and lights. And I think that guy fell over. But I'm not quite sure what I did. And there's a lot of that in the game. There's a lot of simplification. Yeah. It's like do this thing, and it looks like you're you're actually you're kind of um, teaming up with your own team, and you're not. It's just everybody doing everything at once, and there's no real strategy to it. I don't think, as opposed to when you, uh, as apart from when you use it. Yeah, um, and they also like to weigh in on that too. They have these like synergy moves, which is like mm. a step down from the ultimate that Lee was just talking about. That mm. like. Okay, so you have a door you need to break open or a wall you need to break open. So you need these two characters next to each other and you press a button pattern that uses mm. their two like special moves pretty much what it is, mm. but they use it together to break down this wall. Well, it doesn't always work. <laughs> I spent a good ten minutes trying to bust through this wall, gave up, went to another like area, the very next area, and there was another wall I could do it to, walked up to it, and it did it like the first shot. Um it's just really weird because like i was switching between characters trying to line them up trying to move the other characters away to make sure that was all good yeah. and nothing and then i just go up to another wall and it works fine it was just hmm. really, yeah. really weird yeah things either happen or they don't and it's um not very well yeah. balanced i don't think no mm. well that's kind of disappointing yeah it's it, it's got a lot of, it's got a better reception from the fan base than it has mm-hmm. from the critics, I think. Because the critics have kind of been, it, it's fine. But it's one of those things I said I said to Derek when we were watching it. It's like, it's brilliant when you're playing it. You feel like I'm having a real blast with this. But as soon as you think about it, once you turn it off, it all falls apart. Yeah. yeah. It's really strange because, you know, at the end of the day, you're punching things as superheroes and everything's blowing up and it's very colorful. And especially when you've got a character like a Scarlet Witch who's an elemental thing and there's orbs flying everywhere and it looks quite impressive when it doesn't take the frame rate. It looks quite impressive. Um, but when you actually think about what you did and then you think about the times you get stuck in the walls or with the camera or you think about the times when the powers didn't work when they were supposed to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just all kind of... The graphical glitches, the sounds dropping out sometimes. And... 
that. Yeah, it's a very strange. And even place. like we can't even go and say, hey, it's geared towards like a younger audience too, because like I had my eight year old playing and he loves these kind of games, like Diablo three, all that. He plays them, he loves them. Um, actually, one where I'll get input for when we talk about them, and um, he was playing, and then he got to a point and he goes, "Hey, Dad, what am I supposed to do? Nothing's working. I'm stuck in this area. This ain't fun anymore." Hmm. No, it's not. And like, I tried looking at it, and I was like, "I've got no idea what's going on." <laughs> yeah, it is. A, it is a disappointment. Yes. No, that um, stinks. Because I know you guys really were looking stink. forward to it. Yeah, something that really does stink is, as I said before, I mentioned it before about the Punisher. People wanted him for years. Mm -hmm. And this is supposed to be a thing geared towards the fans, and so, the, the, the developers said that you know they wanted to honor what the fans wanted. Um, mm -hmm. And he's back in this, but in the season pass. And I think that's really a bit of a slap in the face, because they know that fans have been wanting him in the game. And now you have to pay for him ancillary um, um, after the fact. I think that's a little bit frustrating for a fan. I don't think that's fair game. You could have put him in the main game without having to pay extra for the one thing people have been asking for since about 2006. Mm -hmm. I think that's a bit cheap. Considering all the characters are in it that you don't really can particularly care about. You could have thrown people a bone. So, and he's part of the extra $25 um, season pass. I think that's a bit cheeky. Yeah, and so far it's only like, what, four or five more characters that are coming? Yeah, and one of them's the one everybody's been asking for. Yeah, it was like oh. Punisher, Moon Knight, um... Blade? Blade? Was Blade one? Yeah, okay. Blade's one, yeah. And someone else. But I was just a bit peeved by that, because that's something that is in foot that was in forums, could you add him as a... And we, we never got him because it was obviously a contractual thing. And now there's an opportunity for him to be in there. They kind of make you pay extra for him. And so mm -hmm. it's not please, it doesn't please me as a fan. And I was really yeah. looking forward to this. I'm like, I'll take this over the Avengers. And now I'm really quite disappointed. Yeah. It's not to say it's a bad game. I wouldn't say it's awful. But it is massively disappointing. It does feel kind of feel it's, rushed. It's... Definitely not a $60 game. No. Yeah, I mean, um, that just just from somebody looking at it, it doesn't look like a $60 game. Like when I saw Derek no. playing it, it doesn't, nothing screamed like, oh, wow, this looks like it's, you know, like an incredibly well-built game with complex systems and stuff like that. It looked like he was just kind of mashing through it and... Uh, you know, every once in a while there was a story thing that popped up. Mm. Um, is there like, so what's, what, uh, you talked about the, um, like, the, the, you were unlocking like health boosts and stuff like that. Is there any other RPG layer to it? Uh, you as a character level up, what that oh. does, I'm not sure. And I think maybe you can make your moves a little bit stronger. Okay. Um, I think I think it makes your moves a little bit stronger and it just opens up, you get one of four slots um, and they're all different power with each slot, but no, basically it's just a different punch or a different and over over time you unlock those with your, your, up, your kind of your level ups and, and exactly. you say that you, this applies to your character, but what does that even mean or is, it, is there a special character or is it just a apply to all of any character that you are currently playing at the time um, I think it's it's um, whatever each character has I guess has a couple of different moves that you'll be able to unlock mm. so you've got to unlock their full potential still mm. and okay. then separate from that you have that skill tree I was talking about that kind of increases that a little more Okay. but outside mm. of using their special move that you've got like a little gauge for how many times you can use it all your attacks do like exactly the same damage or doing exactly the same thing like across the board as far as everybody so it's just it comes oh. down to purely like who do you want there what do you like using okay so and do you have to unlock all of these um like you have, wolverine do you have to unlock all of his stuff by playing him or is it like you you yeah. you progress and then like every character you end up you unlock that first tier of stuff. 
or do you uh, have to? It's, it's individual. Okay. Like whoever I'm you're pretty... using out there will gain experience. I'm pretty okay. sure it never used to be. I'm pretty sure that everybody used to level up pretty much the same as you did. But then you apply the stuff. I think everybody kind of grinded with you, your whole team that you could use, right? Grinded with you. I'm sure it was like that, especially in two. Yeah, that's what I remember from two was it being more of like the whole unit together to where depending like who you're attacking with is like how much mm. XP they got. Because I noticed like a couple mm. characters would level up at different instances. Mm. Um, but then like you also like there was a couple spots where I opened up where I found like XP globes or cubes. Mm. But mm. I've just been saving them for when I actually can unlock somebody I want in a team. This yeah. is going to be like, yeah. all right, find the four characters you're going to enjoy playing with. And then build them up, and there you go. Like there yeah, isn't much, <laughs> much of a use to like switch out characters. Like in the old games, depending like what you were doing or like what level you're on, you might have a certain set of characters you use together for those levels. Um, mm. And now that's not too much so, to where everything seems like flatlined across the board, pretty much. Just like, what do you enjoy? Who do you enjoy using? And even then, the, the way they dole out characters within the story progression is kind of really lazy. In the first five minutes, you get about ten characters. They just throw you into the story. It's like you didn't earn them. They just, yeah. it's just matter, here is Iron Man, is this and that and the other. But the worst thing is, um, about kind of ten minutes later through the story, you will get within the space of about two minutes, three different iterations of the Spider-Man. And it's like, well, where's the variation in that? So I've got kind of your Miles Morales, Spider Man, it won't mean much. Miles Morales, Spider Man, Spider Gwen, Venom, and Spider Man. And it's like, well, where's the variation of all of those characters you just given them? Yeah. And it's, it's kind yeah. of, you could have spread those out. That's really lazy. And it's like, I've got all these four characters and they all do pretty much the same thing, just with a different graphic. Yeah. But thanks very much. <laughs> very strange. Very lazy, I think. I guess it would be. I mean, if they if they're pretty much the same characters with a different skin, mm. holding them out <laughs> for for like something special down the road wouldn't probably yeah. be even any better. At least it's like, okay, here's all these characters that kind of play the same. We'll unlock them all at the same time, and you can choose whichever one you think is coolest or whatever. Yeah, uh, I mean that's yeah, what I it seems like they're going for. They're just kind of like they got they had. Marvel's, I guess, kind of big, even though it's kind of at a lull right now, but it's still something that's interested, interested, like some, some, something that they know they slap Marvel on the box, people are going to buy it, and instead of like putting the effort in to make it something special, they just decided to maybe try to cash in a little bit on uh, the zeitgeist. Said, hey, you. But that's you, the key. You, you can you can you can uh, play all of these all your favorite Marvel characters in one spot. Ooh. Awesome, let's do it. But that's the key. What you just said there about you know you'd be disappointed if you dumped them all out. So is is the fan thing you can have pick what one you want. Normally, I would say what you would say um, and say, well, it's kind of you get to choose who you are. It's not such a bad thing. But for some reason, this is I've just felt this time that's and that's probably emblematic of the whole game. I mean, I would have thought it's like, well, that's an opportunity for you. And I just think that's cheap. And it just, I think it's the atmosphere of the game that's not wanting me mm. to give it that goodwill. Um, there's something that rubs me up the wrong way about it. It doesn't feel quite right. Yeah, so um, many years later, you just kind of feel cheated from how in depth it could be somewhat easily from what we've seen in like other games. Like, yeah, especially the first one where you had things where you could pick up equipment. And you could equip different belts and stuff, which give you different buffs. And stuff. That's all gone. That's, that's out of there. You know, different buffs and cuffs mm -hmm. and belts and helmets and stuff. That's all gone. But I threw that out. And now yeah. it's literally just like Infinity. Thinking about it, Team Ninja made Disney Infinity as well, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think, I, think if, I thought Infinity was like Disney Interactive or something like Yeah, but obviously, yeah, but that's just the kind of they they high big Lynn didn't they can make it I'm not sure whether they did the Disney one or I know they definitely did Star Wars Disney Star Wars it's definitely Tim Ninja doing the fight but I've got them all here but anyway yeah 
Uh, yeah, so it sounds like uh, if you're interested in the game, maybe wait a little while. Maybe you'll pick it up on sale or something like that. Or a, a deal where you get the game and the season pass all in one bundle for a, a, a reasonable price rather than jump in right now. Uh-uh. Yeah. Maybe. All right. And uh, Infinity had seven developers. Avalanche, Please. Ninja Theory, Sumo Digital, Heavy Iron Studios, United Front Games, Studio Gobo, and Ultron. Oh, well, shit. I thought Team Ninja was... And the publisher... Ahead. Okay, so the publisher was Disney Interactive. Yeah. And then they had all those developers. Wow. Uh, that's where I got confused. Team Ninja, Ninja Theory is my bad. All right. Uh, so let's uh, move on to our next game, which is Dragon Quest Builders 2. Uh, Derek was talking about this before release, and um, he, he was really into the first one. And I was kind of like, I, I played a little bit of the first one and didn't really click with me, but like the idea kind of made sense in my head but it just didn't wasn't working out um but i'm glad he kept talking about it because it kept it on my mind and i ended up picking it up at when it when it came out on the switch and uh kind of fell into it pretty hard (laughs) uh that's the reason this is so late right now because we got stuck playing dragon quest all damn weekend yeah uh i kind of spent the entire launch weekend of that game playing just that game uh, I put I put quite a lot a lot of time into into it and yeah so just as a quick overview it's like if Minecraft had like a story mode in it uh, where you you're, you're building things but you're doing it because you're getting quests that are asking things of you but it's also got like farming and mining and um all sorts of other stuff in it too um so it basically it's like minecraft meet and and it's an open world game so it's minecraft meets uh stardew valley meets breath of the wild which was is kind of like my fever dream uh come to life uh and you know it's it's not it's not perfect it's not like as good I would say it's not as good as any of those games but it pulls enough strings and enough um, things from from their systems and everything to make it kind of feel like uh, you're getting a mini version of each one um, so like it's it's a it's an interesting way that it starts out for, for one one thing that I will say is that, it takes a little while to get going, and I think Derek, you can agree with that. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it definitely it, has a slow start up. Yeah, and the characters, there's so much dialogue. <laughs> um, so there's there's no like spoken voice acting or anything. It's all through um, text boxes that that pop up, and um, it's just like right from the start, I'm trying to go through all of these things that they're saying but it's so wordy and thankfully they do the um they do the the zelda thing where they highlight important words and stuff that you're supposed to be focusing on so you can kind of just press through all of the dialogue boxes and just see like okay um he's blah 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 blah. he wants this and this blah, blah 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 and then get to um what you're actually there to be doing um and yeah that's probably uh kind of i guess my biggest problem with it is that like i wish i wish i had a more i wish the dialogue was a little bit more interesting a little less wordy so i would be able to so i'd be more inclined to read through it and and get an idea of uh you know who these characters are instead of just kind of clicking mm-hmm. through them and getting a, a basic gist of it um but yeah outside of that um you know it's a pretty straightforward story uh you're you're bringing life back to the world 
in, in some way. Like there's been this big calamity that's kind of destroyed everything and you're a builder that is um, one of like they, they've kind of gone extinct but you're you're kind of um, you're, you're one that's kind of come back and you're tasked with kind of rebuilding the world after this destruction occurred um, and you you go to these islands and like the first one you go to is a farming focused island and that's where you learn how to farm basically um, there's you learn a lot of other stuff there too but the main reason you're there is to learn how to grow crops and the whole thing is based around um, there's this uh, calamity like a poison that's covered the land so the people there can't grow crops anymore so you have to bring life back to the land like make it uh, green and, and grassy as opposed to um, they call it spoiled soil is the um, term they use for the the bad ground that you have to that have to fix up mm-hmm. and um, yeah so so you learn that and it's like uh, very user friendly like uh, the building and the planting and all the things you have to do is very intuitive and you can just tell that they've spent a lot of time like um, user testing it uh, there's a lot of things that a lot of other builder games are kind of like a little more clumsy with uh, but this is very uh, um, just, just easy to place blocks easy to destroy them if you accidentally place them in the wrong spot it's easy to like you build up a room and then you put a door on it and you put um, like you you build a room you put a door on it and then it automatically registers it as like a tiny room or a small room and then Mm -hmm. when you put other objects in there like if you put a bed and a light source then all of a sudden it turns into a bedroom and then you can assign that bedroom to one of your one of the characters that's in your village and you know that's something that um, over time will generate um, do they act, what do they actually call the hearts that you pick up is there a term for it um yeah there is and it's on the tip of my tongue and it god damn it I've talked about this game so much <laughs> Yeah. Um, it, um, anyway, the the more things you do, the more missions you do, the happier your people are. The more hearts come out of them. <laughs> That's the only way that I can describe it. And you collect these hearts, and that goes into a pool that you use to upgrade your settlements uh, and unlock new um, blueprints and. Uh, recipes in order to build more things um and it, it's a very satisfying loop like you, you're always making progress it's a the, the game never stops <laughs> like I, I played it for uh for, for as long as i played it the reason one of the reasons why i i just kept playing and playing and playing is because it always has something new for you to do uh, you finish one thing and then there's three more things that three more villagers that have tasks for you then you complete those and then there's another person with a um, exclamation point over their head that has a quest but and, and you just keep going and going and going um, and yeah what was that uh, it's called gratitude gratitude okay gratitude. yeah so so the gratitude is your basically your upgrade currency for to get more recipes and stuff like that um and it's also very like charming and cute uh it's it's a very like positive game everyone's like whenever you build something they're all cheering and clapping and um everyone's very happy that you're helping them out and stuff like that and that goes a long way to kind of motivate you as well to keep going because you know if they were if they weren't I guess it's like uh, in the same way that like they're giving you gratitude, they're also giving you like motivation and stuff like that. So um, that's pretty cool. 
and as you advance they start doing more around the village so like you'll unlock a tier like when you first start out with the farming especially like you're the only one that can plant crops you're the only one that can pick the crops once they're um once they've grown um you're the only one that can cook blah 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 blah, blah. but as you advance um the town then all of a sudden the townspeople will be able to plant crops so you don't have to worry about that anymore uh then somebody uh learns how to cook so then if you build them a kitchen they'll just keep cooking and you don't have to worry about cooking um meals for not only for yourself but also for all the other villagers um so it's just got a really a really good progression and something that i don't i haven't really seen in uh, these other types of builder games because they're you know it's ever since minecraft there's been a ton of these kinds of things um and they're all kind of get, go down the same path with only a little bit of variations but this one because of the focus on story and progression um it, it kind of gives you a goal to shoot for that something like minecraft eventually i fall off of because I like it, it kind of like requires you to make your own goal, and that only carries me so far. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the detail of the game too, as far as like graphics and the blocks and the stuff that they give you to build with, like it's just not your your blocks. You can get like chairs and tables and like yeah. actual roof pieces and stuff once you go further on. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I won't give away too much here because I've seen what my brothers played and like there's some crazy stuff that comes up, like really awesome stuff that you can build with, which like it opens the possibilities for what they could add to it if they really wanted to. Like yeah. if they give this game a serve with the stuff that I've seen from what you can get later on, because you also do get equipment in this game. So you have like a sword, a shield. Yeah. Your buddy gets like a big club and stuff. You're a uh, club for breaking rocks and stuff that'll upgrade as well. Mm -hmm. Um but like a survival or like kind of like horde mode type deal would be really cool. Okay, you build up this area, you have so long to build up a base, and now you got to defend from waves. If they'd add something like this to this game, it would be amazing. Yeah, like a free build mode or something like that. Yeah, like, which is kind of like what the multiplayer is, is like you can go in and like free build and stuff like that. But then if they add like, okay, we've got a survival mode here build up mm -hmm. and survive waves of enemies kind of like horde mode and stuff from like years of war or something like that you know you had so long to set down set up and then you were going to start getting monsters which they could use because dragon quest has been around for ages it has huge amounts of monsters and enemies we have them here in the game you have the fighting too yeah and um something like yeah, that would be really cool i don't know if the combat would hold up to something like that though like the the combat just isn't great. It's 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 just one button <laughs> that you're smashing over and over again, really. Um, yeah, but you got like your little spin attack. Different weapons do different things, and then like I said, like where my brother's at, there's some really cool building stuff. Oh yeah, definitely not with the building. I can see that's why I was like, I think like you know the main mode in Minecraft is technically survival. Um, but it's yeah. not it's not like wave based. It's just when the sun goes down, things get more dangerous. And once you start mining in the ground, you start finding a lot more enemies. Um, something like that, I yeah. think, would be cool with maybe a few like um, generated quests to kind of pull you in certain directions to give you something to do mm -hmm. when you don't want to just be coming up with your own like building your own base or something like that. I think that yeah. would be really cool um, because uh, so that first island was really cool with the farming. I really enjoyed that. Uh, but this next island, with it, it's focused on mining. Um, yeah. I don't really know how this is going to apply when you bring it back to your um, original, what, your home base. I understand it was pretty obvious how you're going to use the farming on your home island. I'm not sure how it, the mining is going to apply. But it's set up a little bit differently. It's like it's almost like completely automated. Um, you're you're repairing this mine, but you don't really have to do any mining. You have these uh, miners that are going down in there and collecting 
most of the resources for you. So your task is to just build buildings that the um, the citizens of the town are requesting. Like you spend most of it building a tavern, and now I just unlocked the second step where I'm building this really big tavern. <laughs> um, so uh, it's been a little bit different, and it's not quite as big of an open island as the first island was so um it's not it's a little bit disappointing i'm a little bit disappointed in the second island um and i'm not sure what is going to happen after that like what is there going to be a third island is there going to be a fourth island um i know i'm not going to give anything away (laughs) yeah yeah, i'm not that far yet but like i said just from seeing my brother play stuff like it gets pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, and at the same, when I was talking about how this game just keeps going and going and going, um, I was like, after you'd complete the first island, you go back to your main island, which you're supposed to be building up to be like this, uh, paradise or whatever. And, uh, you didn't really spend too much time there like I didn't I didn't spend a whole lot of time there and build up like this huge farm crop or something like that you you make a river um, which was cool like like seeing all that happen in the world transform and stuff like that but then it like really quickly hurried up and rushed you to the next island yeah, it was like, all right, you did these couple things, you built your river, get out. Yeah, it's like, like, well, wait a minute, I just learned all this cool stuff, shouldn't I, like, build a farm here and feed, have these people that are living here now be able to feed themselves and stuff like that. It's like, no, 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 go to the next island, quick. Um, yeah. And, and I was you like, have, okay. like, mini islands you can unlock, too, and if you go and collect, it gives you, like, a checklist of stuff yeah. to collect. And once you collect everything, each island's a different resource, and then you get unlimited of that resource. Oh, really? I didn't know you unlocked that. That okay? Okay. So yeah, when you, if you go back to like the dock and then go to the travel map. Oh yeah, yeah. I know. I know about. I know about the other islands. Um, I just didn't know that the reward was you get an infinite amount of resources. Yeah, each island's a different resource. And then okay. as you complete those checklists, it's like, okay, you have infinite of this, you have infinite of this. Oh, wow, okay. It was kind of cool. I was like, oh, that's cool to go there and, like, I just want to, outside of, like, getting, like, the decorations and stuff that you can buy with the gratitude, that's, like, another thing to use it towards. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of weird using it because I think what you have to do is once you learn that new table, go back mm-hmm. to the first island where you have, like, all this extra gratitude and okay. drop that table there, and then it'll allow you to start, like, unlocking more things, too. So it's kind of, like, you kind of got to bounce around places, depending, like, where you have the gratitude and what you want to unlock, if you want to unlock everything you could possibly build. Okay. Yeah, it, it almost seems like the game is, you know, focusing you on these periphery islands to kind of, like, tell you the story and unlock all of your... um recipes and blueprints and stuff like that and the ultimately it's going to result in you kind of unlocking infinite build mode on your main home island um Mm -hmm. with all your acquired recipes and stuff like that just what it seems like um it just also seems like it's very long (laughs) It, it seems yeah. like it. It's, it seems like a very long game because that first island I probably spent oh, fifteen to twenty hours on that first island. Um, yeah, I and... put a ton of time into this game. And... Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it is cool, and um, I am not quite as hot and heavy on it as I was. Like I have kind of started going to playing different things now but um yeah, i'm still looking breaks, but... yeah i'm still looking forward to going back and certainly finishing up that second island and seeing what like how it progresses after that um i i i have it on the switch uh it plays well in in handheld mode but when you do put it on the dock and it upreses and stuff like that uh, there are <clears throat> there is some frame rate drops 
it's not like choppy frame rate drops or like um you know like like really 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 bad noticeable performance it's more just like a gradual slowdown like um so you can get used to it a little bit easier than if it was just like a constantly crazy fluctuating frame rate um yeah. so that's a little disappointing but it's also not nearly as bad as it could have been if it was like this very erratic um uh, frame rate going go, going up and going down. It kind of feels like they they hit their limitation on it, and they knew, and they kind of incorporated some way to make the uh, the frame rate a little bit smooth. The frame rate changes a little bit smooth um, without really being able to completely maintain the like 30 frames per second it's going for. Yeah, and I'm playing on the PlayStation 4. Um and it's been performing pretty well so yeah i kind of wish this was a uh a pc game as well because it seems like it would be really yeah. cool for mods and and stuff yeah like, that. like once you hit like that max level have everything unlocked and like i watched we actually like i watched a video of a guy uh he's like level 99 he's got everything unlocked and he built like this huge mansion like he was going in and actually like pulling up pictures of mansions online and mm -hmm. then like rebuilding them in the game or like taking different parts from each one and building it into the game mm -hmm. and it was just like mind-blowing i was just like wow we can do yeah. that at the end yeah. like there's definitely a reason to get to the end of it and like hit that max level cap so you can start building these cool things because i think it'll give it I think it has a little bit more edge over Minecraft as far as building because of the more like detailed pieces it has to offer and it seems like there's going to be a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think... I don't know. It's, it's hard to to say one yeah, like over right the other. Where we're at. Yeah. It seems like th there's a lot more tailored stuff going on here um rather than minecraft that is just kind of like this open book that you can do like pretty much whatever you want and with the systems mm -hmm. that are there um and and when i was talking about like the pc being being on pc and stuff like that's kind of like what made minecraft minecraft was like custom servers yeah. and uh, mo mods and skins and 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 stuff like that to like build community like discrete communities around it and stuff like that and i don't think that that is necessarily what you're gonna ultimately get with this i don't think it's going down that road this seems to be more of like a here's our dragon quest game where you get to build stuff and here's your story and stuff like that and then at the end there's free play mode um and you can bring your some of your friends in but it's never going to be quite as robust as you know some of these uh pc game pc started games that um are are really about just being open and allowing you to do kind of whatever you want with them mm -hmm. but uh but as Ooh. as what it is like a story driven builder kind of game it, it does it really well um and like i said it's a it's a nice thing to have in a in a world full of you know just whoop, in a world full of um uh you know kind of like aimless builders you know um mm -hmm. without without any sort of like main quest or anything like that is there anything else you want to add have you done the multiplayer ha at all not yet uh because no. i just like recently hit them because i kind of like been putzing around with it and probably exploring a little more than i should have Mm -hmm. Um, and then getting sidetracked by everything else, making sure that we played more than just that. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, um, we're going to try it soon. It might be something I try to dive into this weekend for one of the streams. Okay, cool. Um, I heard, does this have cross play between the two versions? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, Dragon Quest Builders 2 has cross-play support on PS4 and Switch. 
Oh, so yeah, nice. so right now this game's only on PS4 and Switch. And I think that was where the original was on there too. Was only on those two consoles. Um and yeah, I guess you we can you can do crossplay if you want between the two versions. That's good to know too cuz I was eventually going to pick it up for my son on the Switch cuz he really likes it. Yeah. Um and yeah, and like I said it does have the performance um drawback on the switch but it's not like a deal breaker i've still put tons of time into this game um Mm -hmm. all right uh that's dragon quest builders 2 um a a very good game that at least i was surprised um by i think derek knew it was going to be good because he liked the first one but um this it definitely uh, caught me by surprise, which is always yeah, good. That's, that's why I kind of like kept like, "Hey Ryan, you gotta try this." Hey, yeah. I just read this about it. Like they've improved, they've improved a lot over the first one. Cause, like, yeah, the first one was good, but it definitely had its issues, and this one they just improved the shit out of it. Yeah, I will say that there is a demo that you can download. I don't know if it's on PS4 as well, but it's definitely on Switch, and. It starts at the very beginning of the game, and like we were saying, it takes a while for this game to get going. And I was initially put off by that demo because of how much dialogue there was and how slow it was moving. And I'm like, I just want to get out there and build. And um, what ended up tipping me over was I saw some, like on launch day, I saw some videos of where it goes, you know, eventually where, um, where you can take it. So if you try the demo out and you're like, oh, this isn't really... Oh, that great. Just know that once you get past that beginning sequence, I'd probably say it's like an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours if you really poke around. Um, it, and it does start to open up. And once it opens up, you kind of just have this giant world that you can explore and um, uh, do missions. But you can also just kind of go off the beaten path and, and find some, some cool stuff out there. Yeah, so that's Dragon Quest Builders 2. So now let's move on to the main event. Our replay of Batman Arkham Knight. I am going to let Lee break this one down. Uh, Batman Uh, Arkham Knight, talk to me about it. What what what's the setup for this? Um, the 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 final Batman game in the Rocksteady trilogy it's another Arkham game with two horn Batmobile sections mm-hmm that's that's pretty good yeah that uh, <laughs> all right that's um, our that's our replay of uh, next Batman week is, Arkham yeah. Knight uh, uh, <laughs> um, it's um, uh, it seems like um, obviously it's kind of it's it's expanded from city Mm-hmm. Um, which was it, which was it, kind it, of it, open world, city yeah. Arkham City was I would I would call that open world, but it was just a very small condensed open world. It's open world when it lets it be open world. Well, that's kind of like um, how this game it, is too, but <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, it, so it kind of where it went from the more Metroidvania of the first one to the second mm-hmm. one, where they opened it up to some extent because it's kind of. It's in the weird escape from New York type Gotham, um, yeah. and they've expanded that a little bit. Um, um, and their new innovation was was to kind of bring in the Batmobile stuff, which mm-hmm. was I remember the reason why I brought this up because I remember that being divisive. Yeah, we I kind of that. put suggestions yeah. in to kind of what we're going to do as a replay. Mm-hmm. What I originally was going to suggest in Origins, uh, mm-hmm. because that's one that everybody overlooked. But I figured we, we all had this one, and this is one I know has been quite divisive, and I think it's probably still divisive. Yeah. Because um, um, it can seem like these Batmobile sections, where, where it's a game that generally gave you freedom within the confines of where they block you off of the city to do mm-hmm. whatever you really want. You can do your missions any way you really want. This kind of really kind of funnels you down the path. It gives you the illusion of being kind of... Go out, go out and do your thing in Gotham. In, in Gotham. Um, it really doesn't. It kind of drip feeds you the missions a little bit. Um, a little bit too much, in my opinion. Um, 
There's really not much to do outside of the missions. Um, it takes a while for the for the different things to unlock. Yeah. Um, it, probably too long. I don't think because I think you guys kind of dropped off it quite quickly. Um, yeah, I did. I did anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, I now I got a, a lot. Beat it. Yeah, yeah, I guess Derek had beat it back in the day. Yeah. Well, Derek can kind of attest to this. It kind of it drips. It kind of takes quite a while before it starts to open up different styles of mission. Like yeah. Kind of um, your killer moth missions and your fire missions and this. That's quite a while for them, and then they kind of double them out over time. And it's like you probably should have spread those out a bit more evenly. Because I think it would be a probably a quite a dry first five or six hours. Um, although to give the game credit, I did nearly choke my own tongue at one section. Because there's a jump scare in this game, and I nearly died. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it, so I'll give it credit for that. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, Derek? Uh, which part? The thing on the rooftop. The uh, bat on the rooftop. Oh yeah. Jesus Christ! I nearly died. <laughs> I nearly died. I would have loved but, to yeah. watch your reaction for that. <laughs> um, and that's another thing, much like um, Ultimate Alliance, I think, where this can seem like a quite a long, drawn out, um, kind of very samey thing um, for somebody that's kind of. I mean, yeah, you know your jokers and you know your this and the other, but kind of all the Easter eggy characters and stuff like that and the, like, the deep cut characters, probably not going to interest people enough to continue on what I think is a 20, 25 hour game. It's quite a long game um, to go to go by on kind of, hey guys, is this character? And that's really it, because it doesn't yeah. really advance much. Um, how do you guys feel about the Batmobile section? Uh, so the Batmobile, I think, is a pretty cool idea. It just the way that they executed on a lot of it left a lot to be desired. Um, for, I, I think at the beginning, certainly, it's it's way overused, and it feels like they're deliberately designing levels around it um, in a way that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. No. Um, and, you know, I, I like the... Um, the ability to, you know, the transform into the tank kind of thing. Uh, I think mm. it, it looks cool and it controls, at least the tank part of it controls really well. But mm. I always felt like, um, I, I described it in the group as uh, feeling like I was in, in on an Olympic luge when I was driving through the city. <laughs> <laughs> because none of these streets are big enough for this Batmobile going like 90 miles an hour down them and the game uh, yeah, kind of yeah. knows it and just bounces you off of <laughs> everything like you're bouncing off Whoa. of buildings you're not causing any damage to them you're just bouncing off of buildings you're taking corners and you're bouncing off uh, corners and stuff like that um, yeah. and yeah so, so that I mean, it, it looks cool. Like you, you get like the sense of speed from it, but it just Ooh. there was there's there was no real there's no challenge to it. There was no um, there didn't end up really even being, in my opinion, a point to it because it was really just you driving from the mission start to the next point of the mission where you trigger the next cutscene and um, uh, the next part of the mission. Uh, oh. and, um, while the combat, like, transforming into the tank and kind of getting, like, the, you, you can, like, strafe and, and, and move around and a, a little bit more nimble, but, um, not going nearly as fast as when you're the normal Batmobile, um, is cool, but at least at the beginning, uh, they weren't, they don't really throw a lot of, um, difficult enemies at you. Uh, it's just it's it's a lot of the same combat over and over again with these same enemies, these the little missile drone things, um, and they're really easy to read because you get oh, that line yeah. pointed at you. Yeah, you know exactly yeah. where they're gonna shoot, 
And like, I think if they would have taken that away, it would have like changed up that part of it significantly. Yeah, I think so. I, I yeah, I, something like that. Some change it, like maybe had the line there for less amount of time. You know, Ooh. like I mean, it's, yeah, like the, the, li- the line is literally there for like five seconds. Like, yeah, I'm gonna move out of the way. <laughs> And it even changes color that, if it indicates whether or not you're in the actual you're gonna get hit by it or not. Um, because there are part that there are parts where you get totally surrounded by these things, and it would be a pain in the ass if um, you didn't know like which one was actually aiming at you and which one was gonna shoot next and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was just like. It's very flashy and it looks really cool and like when they blow up and the effects and stuff like that. Um, and there's some there is something interesting and engaging about that combat, the Batmobile combat and the way it feels, but they don't just like the driving around part of it don't really execute on like keeping it interesting more than just like for the first few encounters. Um, mm. at least that was my takeaway and, th- and there was there's too much like get out of the Batmobile activate this thing get in the Batmobile shoot the hook pull the thing down get out of the Batmobile do this thing oh gotta get back in the Batmobile mm. now remote control the Batmobile and <laughs> oh. um, the antenna part yeah, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the antenna part, and then immediately after that, the Ace Chemical Factory um, was was all that, um, and I, I wasn't sure whether or not at that point I was still being tutorialized, um, mostly because the tutorialization in this game is very strange. Uh, oh. It kind of throws you into um, the game without too much of an intro. Um, I feel like this game came out at a time when uh, we a lot of people were being critical about like every Assassin's Creed game that comes out has this super long tutorial intro and I don't need that I'm a gamer I know how to play games um, but this game kind of like took that and decided that well these people have probably played all of the previous Arkham games so we're not going to tutorialize any of the um, stuff from those previous games were just going to kind of put you in and only show you the new stuff. And that was probably fine back then when this game came out, but four years later, I haven't played an Arkham game in, well, since Arkham Knight. <laughs> uh, so there was a lot of stuff that I wasn't familiar with, and it just kind of throws you into it um, in, in, in those terms. And uh, and then kind of over tutorializes you with all of the other stuff with like the Batmobile and the um, the new abilities you get. Like was that is that fear mechanic new for Arkham Knight or was that in the previous games? Um, I think that was new for this. Yeah, or at least that, that, that would make referee. sense because they tutorialize it a lot, and it seems to be like. A significant part of what how you're supposed to engage with the enemy so it, it felt like that um Ooh. that that was a new thing that they added as opposed to kind of doing a refresher on the other stuff uh because you start this game with a whole bunch of gadgets and and stuff like that stuff that you'd previously accumulated over time in the other games um and you just kind of start out with it here. Uh, mm-hmm. And yeah, that that was like my initial impression going back into this game is like, it kind of throws you in, but then it kind of does these little tutorial breaks that um, are kind of more frustrating than anything, uh, than, than really informative. Um, Cause, like it doesn't really explain like where you can sneak like like going into the the floor vent shafts and climbing up them and 
doing your hanging takedowns and stuff like that. It doesn't really explain any of that stuff. That came back to me because I kind of remembered it from the previous games, how it worked way back when I played them. But, like, I can't imagine um, how long it would take to, to figure some of that out and say, like, another five years or something like that. Mm. Depart departed from playing these games. Um, I, and in a lot of ways, it's just because these kind of games have kind of advanced a lot uh, since since this one. Yeah. Uh, like you're, you, you, I mean, the last game that came out with the this you know trademark Batman combat was probably mm. Shadow of War. Um, and I didn't play that. Spider-Man. The more, the more, the more I play, going back to this and comparing it to Spider-Man, I don't think Spider-Man is really, there, there are similarities, but it's not, um, it's different enough. Uh, it's not as, it's not as fast. You don't have as many enemies piling on you at the same time. This the few encounters that I had in, uh, at the beginning of this game were like you were getting swarmed and you were literally just pressing the button and like flying across the entire level <laughs> in order to beat somebody down and Spider-Man had a lot more um, just different options to choose from when you were doing the when you were doing the combat um, oh so it's it's similar, but it's not quite as, um, not not quite as at least in my opinion, not quite as button mashy as this is. What uh, more right to be more of this than the others did? Because this one um, um, implements the fact that you can use the environment and things in the environment which you couldn't use in the previous game. That's mm-hmm. what kind of reminds me, like where you could, for instance, in the Spider-Man thing, take somebody's shield and hit somebody else with it and stuff like that. They implement mm-hmm. this into it a lot. You don't use it much because it doesn't really tell you very much that you can do it. But, yeah, you yeah. can just pick anything up. And so there is that element where it does remind me more than the other games do. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no yeah, element I, that you could say... Yeah, that and I guess, I guess that's, like that's, uh, that's probably one of the probably. bigger differences between this combat is, and the Spider-Man combat is the Spider-Man combat is a little bit more clear on when you can do things other than just punch dudes yeah um or or counter uh it, yeah like you said yeah. there's it, it doesn't really um batman doesn't the batman. batman combat doesn't really put a lot of focus on um those kinds of extra moves like like spider-man yeah. did like that was like that you had to use some of those special abilities in order to take some of those enemies down in spider-man um this leads more into the rhythm game sort of thing, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does, I guess. Yeah. 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 It, it, yeah. It ends up being in like, you're kind of, you're, you're, you're mashing the button and then, um, every once in a while you're hitting Y to do the counter. Um, mm. it's a bit like juggling, but you're the ball. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 yeah. Or, or like, uh, like pinball, but you're the ball. Mm. It is a little bit more heightened than the other Arkham games. It does fly across the river a little bit more unrealistically than you used to. Yeah, that that first at... fight uh, when I when I first got into it, I think I messaged in the chat. And I'm like, holy shit! <laughs> yeah. You're like you're like it looks like you're you're skating across the the world to get not even like I, I don't think I ever really grasped the auto quote unquote auto aim that is in this game because it kind of does automatically lock on to enemies um mm. and i never understood why sometimes he would go after this enemy that was completely across the screen when there were like three guys right next to him or something like that uh mm. and and it's just more exasperated here because your attack arenas are bigger because it's like an open world so you're like you got a guy like you know 
50 feet away and he just like sails flying over there and punches him and then sails right back to punch the guy that was right next to him well, it's, it's like what you were saying though with the driving thing um, everything, everything is there those lines are extended lines where you can kind of hockey puck your way through it and look quite slick the fighting mm-hmm. is the same it throws you over 50 yards into the corner and back again because it looks cool right if yeah. it makes right. sense is is kind of negligible uh, you know kind of debatable it doesn't yeah. make much sense for him to do that but it's that's probably its biggest strength and its failure because it makes you feel like batman it makes you feel like a badass but it's not necessarily satisfying to do it because you're too busy going what the fuck was that yeah you're too busy to, like what the watch, hell is so going on yeah. I mean, I think they come up with some cockamamie kind of reason why he does that. I think his suit's augmented. That's why he does that super do that stupid punch where he sits Which... there and rails into the guy. Like, like, oh, I don't okay, know what it's yeah. Like. It's, yeah. It's yeah. like, it's like the dog from Tom and Jerry, kind of with a. <laughs> um, yeah, and so I think there's some reason why they do it, but doesn't make as much sense as like when you see spider-man do it because obviously he's agile and he's, he's supposed to be fine yeah like he, he's Batman. got superpowers actually and he's a good old 200 220 pound batman it doesn't make much sense to watch him fly across like a frisbee yeah so yeah um everything's a bit bigger I mean, it's a bit more blockbuster like, it's a bit bigger and kind of yeah it feels like it, it was it's dumb. firmly in the like era of everything needed to be open world but everything didn't really need to be open world (laughs) like for marketing you needed to say that you were open world but in reality did the game really the game and the systems really um lend to that uh because i don't i don't think like i really do like that first arkham asylum game um because it was this you know small intimate level that you kind of slowly progressed through and then went back and, and accessed like a metroidvania um mm. and arkham city was kind of like this good like half step between the two like they were still yeah. it was small enough that you could remember distinct areas of it and remember to go back and do things once you've found a new gadget or something like that mm. But it was also a little bit bigger and um, allowed them to kind of stretch their legs a little bit in terms of, um, you know, like some of the gameplay and moving around as Batman, like using the zip line and uh, uh, um, the fuck, gliding um, and yeah. stuff like that. But then when you oh, got to this bigger open world, it kind of lost some of its like the personal nature of it like they they right right away cop out and find a way to get all the civilians out of the um yeah. city um yeah and then all that's on the street are thugs and mm. uh you know it just does like the little moments where you have something going on like to create a quote-unquote living city don't really amount to too much uh yeah. whereas i think it, it felt even better in arkham city um because it was like this city that was turned into prison kind of thing and there was already yeah. like the citizens were the criminals and they were living there but they were also causing trouble um mm. So, yeah. I think, I actually think I kind of like the story. Um, See, I hate the story. Really? I, I like, so, yeah. so let me, let me, um, I guess, rephrase that. I don't like, like, I think that the setup to get uh, everybody out of the city was dumb. Um, mm. But I like the idea of Joker being like this... Um, Yes. Yeah. The 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 demon on Batman's shoulder kind of thing, the monkey on his back and always following him yeah. around. I do like that and I um I almost wish there was uh, does that ever get explored at all in like the comics or anything that you're aware of? Um well, it's always kind of been there. Kind of they are kind of mm-hmm. not one without the other. 
Oh well, yeah, I understand that, but but I mean play. specifically like um, Batman hallucinating him and um, oh, probably. Okay. Been eight years. Um, probably I think I think yeah, I think that would make a cool like you know like the 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 a movie or something like that. Like if they were gonna make another Batman movie or something, I think that would be a neat um, way to to approach like having the joker but not actually having him be the um the villain you know like he always is like the big Ooh. like the, the supreme big bad um yeah and they they did some really cool things with that like um that first time you go back to the clock tower and like you turn around and the whole level changes behind you um yeah. that there was there was some really cool effects there uh i just don't know um, whether or not they uh, keep capitalizing on that or if they kind of just use that up front and then kind of fade away from it. Um, yeah, I, I think he's, he kind of dips more into the kind of nature type thing of it. As What's that? Goes on. Cause obviously he dips more, they, they do dip more into the kind of surreal um, kind of uh, losing his mindy sort of thing of that as okay. the game did. Yeah. Yeah, um, that is the strongest part of it. Although I said I didn't like the story, that is because at first I thought it's cheap. You're doing Joker again. You're bringing him back again. Yeah. Um, and yeah. the way they're using it is kind of in a weird way, kind of genius. Yeah, I thought I thought that was I, like it, even back then when I first played it, I thought that was like a really cool twist on it. Yeah. And, it, and it's yeah. it's a yeah. it's a good twist too. Like when they introduce him. Um, yeah. Of course, what you're doing at the at when they introduce him is not really Ooh. cool at all but um <laughs> that that Ooh. that sequence where you're pulling those tubes out of that thing and moving them over oh my fucking god what a pain in the ass yeah no, yeah no get it <laughs> no oh that was shit <sighs> that was oh my i oh, somehow shit. had forgotten about that from the first time i had played it and yeah. boy did that come rushing back yeah. i guess maybe it was fitting that that was the moment where batman's past came back and haunted him too um. <laughs> life, life imitating art yeah they're they're trying to yeah. drive you just as mad as batman is um mm. but the actual plot isn't very good if you know anything about Batman, within two seconds of seeing who the bad guy is and the way he talks, you're like, I know who that is. Yeah. And they have the gall to um, think it's going to be a mystery who it is. I said to Derek in the chat, I know who this is. Tell me it is, because you played it. It's like, yep. So I can tell you. Yeah. Um, not very good. Not very good at all. Yeah, I don't. I yeah, don't. obviously, really. I, I obviously didn't play long enough to unlock it to, to figure that out mm. and i also mm. don't have enough um like memory of the old games and enough mm. info on on batman lore to even really make a guess although I, you can tell that he has some sort of unique voice so uh, i could probably mm. just listen to the voices in order to figure it out um yeah i mean i mean yeah. we're talking about this so you want to just talk about who it is i don't i don't care if it's yeah. spoiled for me yeah, First, it's the second Robin. Yeah, it's the second died. Robin. It's Jason Todd. Yeah, the one that they think dies but doesn't die in the third game or the second game. Yeah, Jason Todd. City, it, City. I know your, I know yeah. your equipment. I know how to get into your bat and cave. I know you. This is oh well. Yeah, they give it away There's only a lot three for people how much been they in tried it. to hide it. Yeah. There's only three people that's been here. That's like Alfred and the other Batman and the other Robin. So it's like, pff, thanks. It's, I don't. It's, I didn't even remember. Amazing. I don't even remember yeah. Robin being in the other game. So, <laughs> yeah. I think they didn't they explain it like that Joker like beat him to death to where you thought he was dead. So then you're going yeah. after Joker. You come back and his body's not there. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was that's something like that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's it's very obvious, and the fact they carry it out so long is, is oh, quite yeah, cheap. Oh yeah, that, that was the most annoying part. Like after you hear the first couple lines and like the first couple oh. interactions, you're like, yeah, I know who this is. Yeah, yeah. 
And then it's just I like, know where to get in and out of your systems, and I know. Yeah. yeah, it's like, no, come on, stop dragging it out. Just take your mask off. Yeah, I don't know. For you somebody know who are. seems to know all about Batman's tools and gadgets and stuff, those fucking tanks that he brings in are real pieces of shit and have absolutely no business uh, yeah. dealing with the Batmobile. <laughs> this is another thing. Like People are like, because the Batmobile plus the new thing, and Jason's not supposed to be close to him. No, nobody knows how to do new Batman, the Batmobile works, apart from Riddler, who makes challenges specifically, yeah, for, your specifically for the Batmobile. Yeah. So it's clued in. Like, oh. Hey, maybe the Riddler. Sense. Maybe maybe the this is a new Batmobile design, and the Riddler is just really like uh, uh, really quick to update his his challenges. Yeah, possibly, he's working burning in the midnight. Oh, I mean, he he was able to oh. seemingly deconstruct all of Gotham City within a few hours in order to put all of those trophies everywhere. Over around the city though. once once the uh, once the um, once the citizens were removed from the city. Yeah. Just find out whoever's selling like who is selling who's selling them the green spray paint, and then you'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, what are you planning on? Uh, I, so I I played a little bit on Xbox One X Ooh. because it's on Game Pass. So I figured I'll just mm. check that out. I only played like about an hour, and then I went back to the PC version, which is the version I originally start owned back mm. when it came out. Um, and notorious, yeah, the notorious yeah. PC version of this game, almost mm. as notorious as the Batmobile. Um, mm. <laughs> yeah. So so when this game came out, this this was like a pretty big. Um, like disaster on PC. It was it was obviously a port. It was a port done not by uh, Rocksteady, but an outsourced port. Um, and it just ran like garbage on just about everything. There was there wasn't a really solid configuration of you know processor and graphics card at the time that could really do what it needed to do. And it was it was all because of poor optimization. It wasn't really like this game, um, like was pushing, you know, the limits of PC gaming or anything like that. It just was a bad port job. Um, and it took them a very, very long time to to get it straightened out. Um, and I remember at the time, like, you know, checking to see every patch, every little patch they put out. Did this is this the one that did it? And like. If I turn this off, it get, it makes it okay for a little while, but it's not okay here. Um, mm. And it was—I remember I got the game. I think I got it packed in with a uh, new graphics card purchase too. So mm. it was like uh, they were like Nvidia was selling it along with graphics cards. This game that didn't play on any computer <laughs> configuration, never mind sure. the cards that they're packing it in with. Um, mm. And on top of that, there was even like, they still do this every once in a while, but it's not quite as frequent, but there was like special NVIDIA, like physics things that you could turn on. Like you could turn on Mm. like, like, um, better, uh, like particle effects and smoke. And I think there was like better tech for the way his cape looked or something like that. Um, and like those were some of the like worst things that you could turn on that would affect the performance. Um, so those, mm. those were like the first things that you that you were supposed to turn off if you were having trouble with the game. Um, cool. But today, you know, four years later, and mm. like you know, probably twice as fast processors and graphics cards and everything's and you know mm. updates and everything like that. Um, it ran. Mm. It runs really well on PC. Um, oh wow! Yeah, no problem uh, maintaining Ooh. sixty frames per second um, with all like full graphic settings. I was I was playing it with everything turned up to to maximum, and um, Ooh, yeah, yeah it, it looks good yeah. too. There's like 
it, it, it looks good and it doesn't look good. So there's like... Yeah, I was going to say that, yeah. Uh, especially when I play it on the Xbox, there's a lot of jaggy, like um, anti-aliasing um, issues. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, 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 stuff, yeah. that that you can you can fix on PC because you can turn all those things on. But um, there's like the everything, especially Batman's suit, seems like it's kind of washed out. Um, like it doesn't look black. It looks like it's like almost like 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 washed out like um like not gray but like almost like <laughs> his suit's always dusty or something like that um it's supposed to be like a, a matte color I yeah like shiny shiny kind of yeah. michael keaton batman color i think it makes it look gray sometimes yeah it does it makes it gray. it makes it look gray in the game anyway um and uh and like I could tell if it was like a coloring, but it just seemed like it was almost like a stylistic choice that they chose, as, as opposed to like, um, this is actually washed out or this is actually gray. Um, but some of the cool things, like they do have really like good rain effects on his suit because uh, it's Ooh. raining almost all the time in this game, um, and like the 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 beads of rain like coming down on his cowl and stuff like that looks really good when it gets close up um and i think like some of the particle effects when you're blowing up those drone tanks look really good um Mm. and yeah i I think overall it's it's a pretty decent looking game if nothing like really um like mind-blowing in in terms of that but it's also it's also always dark so um yeah you know they get away with a lot by just having like bright lights juxtaposed against shadows that that kind of look cool from a distance and stuff like that Mm. it gets really cool when you get more towards like the red light district sort of parts of it Mm -hmm. you've got the neon kicking off and stuff like that and you really get a bit of color yeah because it is quite gray and brown and when you start getting like the reds and the pinks and the then it really kind of pops a lot but, um, yeah yeah i could i could yeah. see that yeah yeah but um yeah it's one of those things where it does seem quite like it stands up today but also it's very much a product of four or five years ago yeah and yeah. and i think i think they get like i said i think they get away with some of it because it's so dark so you're not really mm-hmm. seeing up close mm-hmm. with like seeing if it's like a tech like real low textures or something like that and uh yeah mm-hmm. the the jagginess on the Xbox was a little disappointing, which I'm assuming is probably mm. the same situation on, on the PS4. Um, just yeah, like, yeah. like anti-aliasing. Uh, uh, yeah, I've had both the the S and the X, and it doesn't smooth on the out at all, really. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there was any uh, any updates for the X, for this particular game, no. or the or no. the PlayStation 4 Pro. Um. No. Um, I think it's probably. I don't want to say the worst because it's still a good game. I think it's a good game anyway. Uh, yeah. But I think it's probably the least of the four. I haven't but, played Origin, so I haven't. I don't. I can't say about that. But it's definitely my least favorite of the Rocksteady three. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it, it might be bringing it back so we see if the next one kind of tightens everything back up again yeah i heard kind of uh, like <laughs> if the they or- do it the origins kind of... team is making a new one maybe i didn't mind origins i think it's quite good it gets a lot of i think it's one of those things where people get got quite was that included kind of was that included in the uh that hd pack they put out no they don't they don't include it no, they don't. Okay. No, it's still running off of the um, the the three sixty version. So okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, but you know, it's one of those things. You change developers and people lose their minds. Um, yeah, well, I'm sure it, it, it's different in some ways too. So, um, you know, a mm. new developer is gonna have some sort of different flavor on it. I think what's what's really weird, what not weird, but interesting 
about Ooh, this is that Arkham Knight when I was look I was surprised when I realized that it came out four years ago. Um Ooh. it feels like sooner than that. And uh literally nothing official for Rocksteady since then. Like not not even yeah. like Hey, we're we're working on this. Like you don't we don't even know. Like officially, there's there's speculation and rumors and stuff like that. But like but at this point, like this is like it's not even announced, right? Like whatever their Ooh, next like game is. So that means be, if it was announced tomorrow, yeah. that means this game has been in development mm-hmm. for four years plus however long it's going to be before it actually comes out. Well, from what I understand, they was working on another game. Um, a Suicide Squad game, mm-hmm. I believe. Um, and I had imagined since the film that was kind of, kind of gonna, kind of it was gonna ride off the back of, it was incredibly badly received. Yeah, that's um, not a, that's so not exactly have... a big property you want a big rock a rock city game to come out revolving around. Yeah, but it would have. It would have fit into what Warner Brothers do. It would have been more of a co op sort of thing, because obviously it's a squad of people. Um, right. And they, they'd kind of like having that kind of more servicey type thing like they got going on with them. Um... Yeah, so anyway, they want to do something different. They open up a little bit more, a little bit more like online friendly. But yeah, from what I understand, they, they can that. So they might go back to the well, I guess. Because I, I know, know Montreal are probably sniffing around that, but. We'll see what Rock said you're doing that. It should appear so. They apparently said DC property. So, yeah, I, I guess at this cool point, to... I guess at this well, point they sh- were they haven't announced anything yet, so they're probably not going to until they announce it for like you know either launch or launch window of next gen consoles. Yeah, it'll it'll probably be like a um you know like spring 2021 game if not um you know a launch game yeah because why not right maybe yeah why not i mean they're they're not like do like a a justice league sort of game so you you can traverse the sort of worlds they build with different powers you know flight and stuff like that i like i like to see him do something completely different too like step away from the comic thing and good luck with that like oh oh, yeah i know they're not going to but um you know like you know like we got horizon zero dawn right from a company Mm. that had been doing pretty much exclusively um kill zone games their entire life yeah and then you know they were allowed to do something original, original and it ended up being pretty good um yeah so that's what i would like to see from from rocksteady is something like you know obviously probably you know third person character action game but Ooh. like maybe their own world their own their own spin on it whatever um yeah. they're a talented studio and it's a shame they kind of get stuck on that kind of franchise kind of yeah uh, development wheel yeah All right. Um, think that's gonna wrap up Batman. Unless anything, anybody else has anything else they want to add, real quick. No, I think we pretty much covered it. Um, mm. Just kind of wasn't like returning to it. I didn't enjoy it as much as when I played it the first time. Mm-hmm. Like starting to do some mm. things, it was just like, eh, Batman again. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I guess. I guess that was kind of my thing too. Was like it. Apparently, four years isn't enough for me to be refreshed on Batman. <laughs> to be to to feel like I'm running on empty on Batman. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know when that will be, but I, I'm kind of interested. I kind of want to just go back on my own and and check out Arkham Asylum, um, and just and just see because that was a really long time ago, and I only played that game at launch. Um, and then never touched again. So I'd be interested. I'm interested to see what, I, how I feel about that game. Going back to it. Um, I say I was kind of, um, but I say I was I was probably more keen on it than you guys. But I was kind of like again, myself. And is it kind of character fatigue? But I've 
recently been playing the Telltale Batman games, and I, mm-hmm. I, I think it's just literally for me that's fatigue. I mean, don't keep yeah. on playing for. Yeah, I think I think that's what it is. Like Batman was, you know, they did a lot with Batman for a long time. <laughs> it was mm-hmm. like Batman, Batman, yeah. Batman, 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 and um, it's just mm-hmm. like, like I'm I'm ready for the the new take on Batman. I guess is what. Yeah. Like like get somebody to new more... to approach it. Go the more detective route. Yeah. Whatever, whatever, whatever the route is, something a little bit different. All right, so before we close up, I just got two things I want to talk about. One is I want to do a TV show recommendation, which we haven't really done recommendations in a long time, but I've fallen in like pretty hard on The Expanse, which is a, a series on Amazon Prime, um, and it's... It, it's apparently based on this uh, the series of novels called The Expanse, and it's a Ooh. sci-fi uh, like it kind of feels a little bit kind of like Firefly, but if Firefly had a point to it, uh, <laughs> um, it's, it's, it kind of revolves around this um, crew that uh, kind of get caught up in this conflict between earth and mars so this is like a world a solar system in which mars has been colonized and they so far in the future that they have kind of mars has revolted from earth and they're their own um entity and then there's this um they're mining the asteroid belt both earth earth and mars are mining the asteroid belt for water and minerals and stuff because they've exhausted them on um, the original planets. So then you have this other faction forming around the asteroid belts. Um, and it's, it's about the conflict between those three factions. There's this, um, this group of like, uh, um, it's, a, it's a crew and it's very similar to, like I said, Firefly. Um, where they're they're kind of like a rogue agent that um, goes between the factions. Um, there's this bigger sci-fi story about this alien menace that's coming to the galaxy to the to the solar system as well, and it's just really good. Like um, mm-hmm. the the it, it's the first few up like I say the first half of the first season is a little slow and you're not really sure where it's going, but once it picks up it it just goes um all of the characters and actors are really really good in it um most of them some of them are i I recognize from other shows and and movies and stuff like that but a lot of them are like this is the first time i've seen them in them oh um what's his name uh we were just talking about the punisher uh thomas jane is in it yeah he's in it and his character is really good um, and yeah, it just, it's like, it goes in directions and explores, um, like themes and conflicts between the factions that other sci-fi stories really wouldn't touch upon. Like, you know, like Star Wars is very much like you get the rebels and you got the empire. Um, but there's a lot more gray area going on here. Um, and it's just really cool how it how it goes through all that stuff and manages to be exciting and yeah I, I pretty much um, started watching it uh, Sunday this past Sunday and I've just kind of like binged the first three seasons <laughs> since then um, oh. and the fourth season is scheduled to come out sometime in December um, so oh. yeah that's that's a recommendation if you have Amazon Prime uh, you should definitely check that out. Uh, kind of hard, didn't it? If I remember rightly. What's that? It got cancelled and then reinstated on Amazon. If I remember rightly. It, is that is that the show that I remember? There was some show that it was like a sci-fi show, right? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That, that is the Three one. Okay. Seasons. Yeah. Okay. I think they got it for multiple seasons as well. Where they're planning like two or three more. So you got yeah, oh, more yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 
Um, I'm not mm-hmm. really sure at what point like it diverges from the books. Um, it just seems like the, the writing is really good. Um, the so it's it. I I don't know if that means that it's still basing, it's still following along with the books, and that's why the writing is good. And eventually, they're going to write a material like some other shows of recent memory. Um, but, uh, right now it, it's, it's like, it's, it's still really good in the, in like the writing department and the story and stuff like that. Um, just a good, um, standout show from in this era of all these streaming services creating pretty much whatever they can throw at the wall. <laughs> um, yeah. and the last thing I want to do is, uh, give a shout out to, uh, our one of our members um bobby bean he is going through some hard times he has ptsd and you know as a result of that has a lot of um anxiety and depression and and things like that and he has decided that he's going to be um seeking treatment uh the flip side of that is he's not going to be able to be around to support his family he's got a wife and I th- he's he's at least got one kid I'm not sure if he's got more than more than one kid um but they're going to need support while he's no longer able to work and and provide for them so he started a GoFundMe campaign um and I'm just giving that a shout out here we're going to be helping him spread the word about that um over the next probably few weeks but we're going to start mostly um this weekend uh with a little bit of an incentive so if you donate to his gofundme campaign um when you do that and you're you're coming from here coming from 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 the voxel community make sure you mentioned in the message when you donate that you're coming from voxel so you get counted toward this um if you donate thirty dollars or more you can choose between a free t-shirt that either has a voxel logo on it or a special design that we've designed for um, PTSD awareness um, and we'll have those uh, pictures up for you so you can uh, choose between them um, if you donate fifty dollars or more you're just gonna get both shirts um, we'll contact you afterward about like what size you want and stuff like that um, in any donation is going to get you entered into a raffle for a chance to win a two terabyte external hard drive uh, that can work on, um, you know, PlayStation 4, Xbox, uh, PC, even if you wanted to use it there. Um, so, yeah, those are some reasons to get out there and um, help Bobby and his family out in their time of need. Um, I'm going to put the link to the. Uh, GoFundMe in the description, like any description you're hearing this on, it should be in the description uh, so you can find it. And if you're a member of the Voxel community, uh, Facebook group or page or anything like that, this link will be all over the place so so you'll be able to find it. Um, Yeah, so that is, I think, going to wrap it up. so what are we looking forward to coming up here? I know uh, Wolfenstein is coming out. Wolfenstein Youngblood is coming out. Uh, well, the day this podcast comes out. Um, is there anything else short term that we're is, are on our radar? Um, not so much for... Um, I don't have a PC, so I haven't played it yet. I, I know uh, there's a game I've been looking at called Hunt Showdown, which finally kind of comes into full release on okay, consoles yeah. in, a, oh. in a couple of weeks. Does so it? That, that, that hits consoles. Yep. I actually, I think I got the code from Stephanie oh, on nice. PC when it was back in like early alpha so that I could check it out. Because I got into like one of their free ones and it was like a short two week thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, cool. and I think I got a code to try it out for their next trial set. And it was, um, 
I think it's come a long way since I last played it from what I've heard and what I've read because that was one I wanted to follow since yeah. the last one didn't really pan out too well for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seemed to have more uh, quite an atmosphere for one of those sort of kind of sort of games. Sort of kind of games? Never mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like it's like a co-op shooter where you're you're you and another person on your team are going up another against like four other groups or something like that, and you're yeah. all trying to hunt down a monster, right? Yeah, and it's got a very monster. kind of turn of the century kind of um, yeah, turn of yeah, the previous yeah, entry, yeah, kind of a um, Louisiana swampy type vibe to it, which yeah. seems interesting. Yeah, which it, like back then it kind of captured that aspect well because it just had one map, and from what I understand, there's a couple more there now and a lot more monsters. Mm -hmm. oh. I remember it being like notoriously difficult. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> I got like, like y'all know I enjoy those type of games even if I'm not good at it, but like that one I just got, it was ruthless. Yeah. Like, like there's, there's like environmental things that are killing you too, but you can also get into fights with the other teams. So, um, it's just all very, uh, not very inviting, let's say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. And, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I did hear about that coming to console. I'm not sure exactly when all of that is coming out, but I think it's pretty soon. Um, the only yeah. thing, other thing that I got relatively soon is control coming out but that's not Ooh. for another month that's like yeah. the end of august so um oh it's a few there yeah um control man of may then yeah so, yeah, man of, yeah man of that's them. coming out too that's the that yeah. until dawn follow-up um yeah astral chain is coming to switch at the end of august as well Ooh. remnant from the ashes it's quite a put. It gets quite packed in August. Think yeah, well, that's when. Yeah. That's when they start releasing games again. Because then you look at yeah. September and Gears, Borderlands, uh, Zelda, Surge Two. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know that I've just been checking the release dates, and there's an there's an Arkham election coming again. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I I read that. I was like, "What the hell are they doing another Arkham collection for?" Really? I th I, really? Yeah. I think it's for, I think it's more for the physical people than anything, because um, <sighs> Arkham Knight gets all the content on disc. Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured it was, is so they could yeah. include Arkham Knight in some capacity. Yeah. I was just like, man, they just it wasn't even that long ago that they put out that other collection. Yeah. Oh well. Oh yeah. well. Oh well. That's what they do. We'll That's again. how it goes. That's how we feel about it. Warner Warner Brothers still living in 2015. Uh. All right. Um. I guess that's gonna wrap it up. Um. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for hanging out, everyone out there in uh, YouTube or iTunes or Google Play Land. Uh, if you would be so kind as to leave us a review or thumbs us up or subscribe or whatever you do that'd be great uh, and we'll see you next time later thanks guys. thank you for joining us in this very special episode of voxel viewpoint if you'd like to hear or see more please consider subscribing to us on your favorite podcast app subscribing to us on youtube or visiting voxelvoice.com where all of our great content comes together in one place. Also check out the Voxel Voice Facebook group, where you can join in on the discussion with a great, like-minded community. 